pastors, brother, and foreign backer of Shepherd's Voice Ministries invite you to worship with them. We have a night vigil service every Friday from midnight to 5 a.m. Our Sunday services begin at 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Come and experience the power of the Holy Spirit and the touch of His hand. Address Shepherd's Voice Ministries, Quality Skyline Hotel, Luton, Bedfordshire, Dunstable Road, LU4 8JL. Telephone contacts 078535 9308 our lines are open 24 hours a day my sheep hear my voice Salabedi Forex and Cargo are proud to sponsor the Uganda Vision Program. Contact us if you want to send cargo or transfer money to loved ones in Uganda. Call us on 0208 884 4060. if you want to send cargo or transfer money to loved ones in Uganda. Call us on 0208 884 4060. Hello, our viewers. Kopango, Musibia Mutiano, Vasebone Banyabo, Agandi. Welcome to this week's edition of the Uganda Vision Program. My name is Solome Kazana, and with me in the studios is Grace Onek. Thank you very much for introducing me, Solome. Well, to our viewers, Grace is from actually Northern Uganda. This is what Uganda Vision is about, merging all of us Ugandans from all the different regions, you know, all of us who make up Uganda. and. You know, we bring out all the best concepts of Uganda, feature them out for you to view and to enjoy and even to, you know, bring in your comments and, you know, present and share. Grace, what do you think? Solomon, you're absolutely right. Uganda Vision is really about bringing all the different cultures in Uganda, showing how diverse we are, mm -hmm. how dynamic we are in our creat creativity. And actually, next week, um, I believe we have a lady from Western, the Western region of Uganda. She speaks all the languages in that area, which are... Lunyankore, Rutoro, Ruchiga, all of those Western Ugandan languages this lady speaks them fluently and she'll be with us in the studios. I'm not disclosing her names as of yet, but when she joins us, you will see and all of you are viewers. I'm sure that's why you like it. I'm sure that's why you are being very supportive. I'm sure that's why you're growing each and every day. And we receive a lot of your comments, a lot of your replies, even a lot of good advice from you, our viewers. So thank you very much. Speaking of which, we even have viewers from... Africa and around the world, uh, but in this time, Grace, we have a special message for our viewers from Nigeria. They are going through a trying time. It's very true. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, with all the, you know, all the Ugandans in the UK and the diaspora, we just like to um, let let all the Niger our Nigerian viewers know that we are with you. We are um, supporting you in this very trying time politically in your countries. And um, we do understand that it's difficult, but we do um, strongly believe that it will get better, and um, we'll continue to to expose the the um, the crisis that's happening back back home in Nigeria. And um, continue to show our support um, for all of those who are caught up in the in the struggle. 
Yes, Nigeria, yeah. we are with you in spirit, in prayer, and as Africans, we're with you. And thank you for supporting the Uganda Vision program. However, to the viewers, next we are going to present to you, as usual, as you know, in the Uganda Vision program, we present to you about tourism, music, developments, name it all, as we used to. But right now, today, in a special way, we'd like to present to you about housing in uganda this is what we're going to feature to you so enjoy housing in uganda and we're waiting for a lot of your emails and comments on the program thank you The abundance of sunshine, the tropical rain showers, all blend together to create a pleasant climate in Uganda, an idyllic place to live. It produces a resource-rich environment that provides materials with which to put up shelter for an increasing population. When thinking of housing in Uganda, therefore, one is clearly spoiled for choice in style from traditional styles that date from pre-colonial times when artisans crafted houses with straw, like this international heritage site, the biggest grass-thatched hut in the world, to houses that cater for the contemporary needs, to the tastes of current trends and modern aesthetics. Western influence in architectural style of housing was first introduced in the late 19th century for colonial civil servants. Technology for this purpose was essentially adopted from the United Kingdom and other British colonies. Built on demarcated plots, such housing was concentrated in residential areas. This was soon to be followed by Indian quarters in urban areas, based on the Indian bazaar, shops and residence concept of the Indian origin. As the country continues to be more urban, you notice more styles and influences in housing than ever before. The country's population is currently estimated at 30 million and is projected to reach 77 million by 2035, while 16% of which will be urban dwellers. The current housing stock stands at 5.28 million housing units with an average household size of 4.7 persons. There is a backlog of 612,000 housing units if every family is to be housed comfortably. The urban areas have a total housing stock of 700,000 housing units with a backlog of 160,000 housing units compared to the rural areas with a stock of 4.58 million housing units and a backlog of 458,000 housing units. This creates an immense opportunity for investment given that the population of Uganda is growing at an annual rate of 3.4% per annum. There's an annual growth in national housing demand of 419,000 units, of which 84,000 and 335,000 housing units are in the urban and rural areas respectively. The capital city Kampala alone requires a total of 34,000 units annually in order to meet the need for population increase. In Kampala alone we have a backlog of 100,000, approaching 100,000 houses. We are promising to build less than 10,000 in the next five years. You know, so in the next five years, we can't take away the backlog as national housing. No single developer can take away that backlog for Kampala alone. Uganda, therefore, takes development of housing as key for development. Housing plays a very important role in the, in the, in the, in the growth of an economy. It's a national asset and it provides a, all of those benefits to a household that they enhances their status and their productivity and thus the overall contribution.
to the economy. Land in Uganda is owned by the people. But to encourage housing development, the Uganda Investment Authority, a one-stop center for all information on investment in the country, links investors intending to acquire land to develop housing and Ugandans that are looking for a buyer or someone to lease land to. That cuts on costs that an investor would incur and eases the procedure of land acquisition. We are working on improving the land registry, the titling, uh, computerizing it. But in the short term, we at the UIA have a one-stop shop. So we have someone from the land office who sits here and is able to quickly uh, process the documents as required through the various offices. Development of large housing estates in order to catch up with increasing demand is the current drive steered by private investment due to positive government policy. Development has full support of government in order to create a vibrant housing environment in which public resources are put in place to support policy measures that encourage private participation in housing development. It has seen the growth of the housing construction sector, new real estate developers entering the arena and existing ones scaling up their operations. People are getting jobs. Every year we are attracting within our companies at least 50,000 jobs. So Ugandans are working, they have regular employment and the banking sector has grown. So they now have access to mortgage facilities. So that combination of having a job and being able to access a mortgage has made the, the, the housing sector boom. The developers are empowered by the Condominium Act of 2001 to develop high-rise and other sectional properties as a tool for delivery of mass housing development in Uganda, catering for the needs of the fast urbanizing city. Construction in Uganda gives developers a competitive advantage because of the abundance of natural resources as sources for construction materials, as well as an open market that allows importation of other materials into the country with ease. Some construction materials are also produced by the local industries. Cement is produced from two factories that have invested in the cement production in Uganda. Clay tiles that give rooftops their colorful finish are produced from the same materials that make bricks for wall construction. National Housing and Construction Company is a pioneer housing developer in Uganda. Since its establishment in 1964 as a government-owned company, it has built over 2,300 executive flats, maisonettes, and bungalows in the capital city Kampala and in other major towns across Uganda to cater for the various housing requirements in Uganda. Unique development approaches like this one, spearheaded by a homegrown housing developer, Akrite Projects, take on virgin, largely undeveloped land in the city's neighborhood to set up eco-friendly housing developments like this one, only a few kilometers from the city center, Kampala. Blending the concept of natural resource conservation while creating self-sufficient developments outside the current city, they hope to create an environment that is suitable for those willing to acquire houses as well as foreign visitors who want to experience a Ugandan homestay. Luxury apartments that suit the needs of short-term stay are being put up in upmarket neighborhoods of the capital city Kampala to cater for the needs of traveling business executives and extended vacations. Like these fully furnished apartments only 10 minutes from the city. They are the ideal escape from the city hustle and bustle while keeping conveniently close to the commercial center. To ease the process of acquiring housing, the Ugandan government made an injection of 27 billion shillings, an equivalent of 13 million US dollars, into a pioneer mortgage company to augment the now emerging mortgage market. Most houses before then had been planned and built using personal savings, often leading to delays of projects which would lead to capital being held in incomplete structures. The key role we really played was 
to provide uh, a medium between the buyer and the developer. The buyer who wanted to own a house but didn't have enough savings, couldn't raise out the money immediately. And the developer who wanted to get out of the stock of housing, uh, sell it and start new developments. That is the major role we played over the 40 years who were the sole uh, provider of mortgage finance. The mortgage market continues to grow with the now vibrant financial sector that has seen an entry of both local and international financial institutions financing house acquisition. Today we offer up to 80% in terms of financing for the buyer. We offer the period of 20 years to the buyers to pay, uh, pay over. And as I said, we are also ready to go into partnership with the developer and arrange with the buyers a tripartite agreement where as construction goes on, the buyer will sign a contract enabling us to pay portions of the money to the developer as the housing units or the estate comes up. The housing finance company of Uganda has now turned into a fully fledged bank. Primarily before that, we were just a savings bank and we had another class of people who are saving for the future over a period. But now with that combination, the individual is able to come to one area, get a mortgage as and when he or she wants, or save if one wants to save over time, or do business if one wants to do business, both for short term. And the other people we are targeting and those who are doing construction won't develop a construction loan for them because that's what has been lacking in our market. Uganda has invested heavily in education, which ensures availability of skilled professional manpower. I have over 30 universities, and uh, we have good architects and good engineers, uh, and good, very skilled workers. So one would get the quality of uh, estate that one wants to put up uh, with using the local manpower in Uganda. The revenue body, Uganda Revenue Authority, works in tandem with other government departments to support the development of housing in its taxing policies on real estate purchases. We've had a, a very favorable tax regime in respect of housing that a value added tax was reduced from 18% to 5%. That is an incentive for the housing sector. Overall, the environment is, 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 is quite favorable, considering uh, even the stability and the economic growth. Welcome back, our viewers. I hope you have enjoyed watching Housing in Uganda and real estate as well next without keeping you long we have a continuation of a keynote speech made by the minister of finance in uganda mrs maria chuanuka during the uganda convention and let me ask grace you attended the uganda convention didn't you yes i did um it, to be honest, it was a, an amazing event. It was very informative. It let, let us Ugandans know who live abroad about the various opportunities back home, um, especially um, in, in the area of petroleum because they've recently found oil in Uganda, and also letting us know about various real estate investment opportunities. So for young people like myself who are looking into going back into Uganda, it was a great opportunity to network and, and meet people that you wouldn't ordinarily meet on an, uh, uh, in your day-to-day -day life. So um, it, was fan it was fantastic, yeah. True, very important. So our viewers just enjoy continue enjoying this speech from the Minister of Finance in Uganda Honorable Mrs. Maria Chiwanoka Now to the question that was asked earlier the property tax someone said a new property tax that was that was uh, signed into law. There is no such thing. There is no new property tax and it has not been signed into law. What URA is doing is compliance. It is going after income that has not been declared for tax purposes. 
In the same way, if you were stopped by a policeman to see your driving license, you would not say, I've never been asked for this before, therefore it's a new tax, it's a new law. The law is there, it has just not been implemented. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem in Uganda, whereby people who pay as you earn, the secretaries, the clerks, the minor officers, pay all their tax because it's identified at source. But some of our richer people do not pay taxes on their income. So what URA does, when they go to buy a house or a car or whatever, they just ask, has this income been taxed at source? They do not ask the source. That is another misconception. They do not ask you for the source of your income. They just ask you for your tax ID number so they can check whether you've paid taxes. As far as the diaspora is concerned, this tax or this compliance does not affect you because money coming from outside Uganda does not pay taxes in Uganda. We assume that Her Majesty's Customs and Revenue have already taken care of that. So if you bring your money to Uganda, as long as you can prove that it's coming in from abroad, you will not be asked to comply. In fact, well, you'll be complying by showing that it's coming from abroad. So ladies and gentlemen, please, there is no new property or land tax in Uganda. What URA is doing is going after compliance and enforcement. Now very quickly, I'd just like to talk to the diaspora. What is the role of the diaspora in Uganda's economy? Last year, your remittances were estimated at $800 million, playing a crucial role in the economy. How can your role be enhanced? We'd like to encourage you to continue working through organizations such as this one, UNA in North America, Ebikabiaba Ganda, Banachi Gezi, and so on. Koreans, uh, communities such as the Koreans, Chinese, Indians have been able to achieve success in their adopted country, while at the same time contributing to the development of their countries of origin through social capital. You can form investment clubs, we can help set up a jobs database to help employers in Uganda identify qualified and experienced staffers from the diaspora. We aim to strengthen and modernize our capital markets to make it easier for non-residents to invest in capital markets back home. Why have food prices risen so dramatically and what does the government intend to do about it? As I mentioned earlier, and I'll be happy to go through this later, in more, in more detail, it's been a question of demand and supply. When can Ugandans expect the oil industry to take off? The Honorable Minister of Energy will talk to that, or as she will talk to how you can participate in or benefit from the oil industry. My area is what is Uganda's plan for utilizing the proceeds coming from the coming petroleum development? This government, this ministry, is committed to transparency in the utilization of the proceeds of oil. Our priority will be to invest in physical and human capital so that when the oil runs out, our children and grandchildren will have something to remember it by. It will not be used for consumption, it will be only used for capital development, such as the new dam, hydropower dam in Karuma, and the major, major infrastructure rehabilitation we have for our major trunk roads. We've been working on a comprehensive policy paper with technical input from partners such as Norway, the IMF, and the World Bank. This paper will be publicly discussed and presented to Parliament for approval. I cannot finish without talking about the youth. 70% of our population is under the age of 25, I'm told. We in this government and this ministry are addressing this by putting more emphasis on vocational training, on business and technical skills enhancement, rather than going for the traditional white collar job. We're looking to make agriculture more effective and productive, and thereby be more attractive as an occupation for our young people, instead of driving border borders. I hope you're not border borders, are. the passenger motorcycles. We wish to encourage agro-processing as a job creation tool. Again, we've started in a small way with some of the commercial banks in Uganda coming in to assist, but we're 
very open to ideas and suggestions from the diaspora. I'd also like to ask the diaspora, apart from working as a diaspora, come to us through your local MPs at home in Uganda. Some of them are here, but the rest you can access. We've just been talking about the dual citizenship that the government uh, approved and implemented. It would have been even quicker if you'd come also through your local MPs and not present something as that from the people abroad in outside countries, as they call it. Learn who your local MP is, get to know him or her, and come to the parliament through that local MP. The other question I'd like to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, where are your children? Where are our children? The children I babysat when I, when I was studying here in London uh, 20 years ago. The children I used to go to their christenings, where are they? Ladies and gentlemen of the Ugandan diaspora, you have been privileged, most of you, to have been born in Uganda, to have been brought up in Uganda, and now working in the West. Your children have not had the same advantage. This is one reason why we made sure that the dual citizenship came through. Because as you retire, as you return to Uganda, your children will be left as the workers. How will they view Uganda? How are you positioning them to view Uganda? As the mother country or somewhere over there that mom and dad keep on talking about? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've implemented the double citizenship process. The rest is up to you. We ask for our children, ladies and gentlemen. We want them back home, or we want them continuing your good work of remittances. Thank you very much. <laughs> One last answer. Someone asked me a question. How can I know when it's time to come back home? This person told me they'd done cost-benefit analysis, plus and minus, this and that, and they're still unsure. I said to that person what my own experience was when I went back home. Listen, inside you, there's a still small voice that will tell you when it's time. Listen carefully and you'll hear it. Thank you. Pastors, Braza, and Florence Baker of Shepherd's Voice Ministries invite you to worship with them. We have a night vigil service every Friday from midnight to 5 a.m. Our Sunday services begin at 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Come and experience the power of the Holy Spirit and the touch of His hand. Address Shepherd's Voice Ministries, Quality Skyline Hotel, Luton, Bedfordshire, Dunstable Road, LU48JL. Telephone contacts 0785359. 9891 Our lines are open 24 hours a day. My sheep hear my voice.